How to write a good melody every time, no matter if you're inspired or not. But what is a good melody? I think there is one simple answer and that is a melody that excites you. Because what excites you excites us, the listeners. But to get truly excited, we need to do the unimaginable. And uh, that's actually not that difficult. And in this video, I will show you three concepts that will help you to accomplish the unimaginable and to, in the end, amaze yourself. The three concepts are work slow, aka thorough, try to always do something new, and the third, finish everything you do. I will start and then I will try to explain how to actually use these three concepts in action. I will uh, create an instance of uh, Spitfire Audio Slabs Soft Piano and then I will create an empty MIDI track. How to work slow and thorough. The first thing is that we need to like listen to all the notes. So I will like uh, begin on an E for example and then I will uh, try to listen to all of the different notes. There are 12 different notes so it's not that difficult. <laughs> And I will always sing along. Singing along is so important. I really like the B. I also like the C. I don't like the C sharp. Oh, I really love the D. I also like the E. An active up. It's really important to hear all 12 different notes because often we can't really imagine that much. And by exposing ourselves to all 12 different notes, then we get to experience something new, maybe. And uh, experience something new is the road to doing the unimaginable. Because if we always just do what our habits tells us to do, then it will always become the same somehow. At least it won't be this, whoa! amazing experience which i'm looking for every time i try to make music sometimes i'm lazy and i need to like force myself to be thorough but uh, when i'm thorough it's like 10 times better every time for me uh, it kind of drains me if i need to do this for every note even though it's the best way but you also need to do it in a way that feels inspiring but i think every time you start a new melody then listen to all the 12 different notes because it's just so inspiring and always sing along because that will help you to understand the relationship between the note and the chords. I will choose the D. Another way to be uh, thorough is to try out different timings and again try to do this as much as possible. So I will move it a bit ahead. I like this much better than but let's try to take it back this is just like uh, it feels like it surprises me and uh, I really like that I think uh, the uh, this also sounds really good and also this but uh, for me I think the most exciting option is this so now we have three ways of being thorough which is singing along trying all 12 different notes and trying different timings and uh, we will just try to uh, apply this for all the rest of the notes for this melody. I can start with trying to figure out when I want the next note. This is the most boring, I think. 
I really like this, just singing the same note twice excites me. It's like I want to know what the next note should be. And uh, that's a really good sign. Again, let's be thorough. So let's try out all 12 different notes. That's beautiful. Mm, that's I like too. I don't like that. <laughs> and my voice. I really like this. like this I also like this okay so now I have like uh, two notes that I like the most three and that's D, C, or D, B, or D, A. A feels really, really good, but it doesn't like excite me. It's like, oh, this feels good and comfortable. But I don't like that because it's a part of my habits. It's like, it's well known. It's not like exciting. It's not a new adventure. And why not go for adventures when we can choose to go for adventures? I think uh, I think C is also a bit more safe than like familiar than B. So let's continue. And my voice really wanted me to sing this note. Again, let's try to be thorough. To like to come up with like uh, rubbish lyrics while I do this because then I just get to like yeah I get to like get one layer deeper and uh, if I'm totally lost then I also start to imagine how would it sound if Nick Cave was singing this if Aldous Harding was singing this some of my favorite singers because it's just like oh okay now I can actually imagine that this melody is really awesome but when I sing it myself, it's just like, oh, I'm just singing it. When I'm singing it, it doesn't like, ah, what I do isn't like, I can't create magic, can I, huh? Okay, but I will finish this melody and then uh, I will return to you with some more explanations of the three concepts. So I wrote my first melody. It sounds like this. You feel okay. I really, really like it. 
And uh, I, before I sat down, I wasn't inspired. I wasn't feeling up to it. And I was kind of scared of writing a melody for these chords because I love the chords. And it makes it so much harder <laughs> to <laughs> work on. Another way to be thorough is to, when you need one melody, then write at least three. Just like, sit down and enjoy writing these melodies. But try to do it as different as possible. And this is where we get into try to always do something new. So, one of the ways to always try to do something new is to choose a note that feels a bit strange. Just start with a note that feels a bit strange, because when you start on something new, then you need to like, yeah, be more uh, present when you do this. You cannot just like do what you always do. And uh, that's really good. So choose a note that feels a bit strange, because strange just means that there is a new adventure waiting for you. It doesn't mean that it sounds bad. It just means that you haven't got used to that note before, but you will. So uh, let's try to find a strange note. I have practiced this for so, so, so many years. So I rarely think that anything sounds strange. So uh, maybe this example will be a bit extreme strange. The F sound is strange. <sighs> but I kind of knew how I would do with the F. And that was a bit boring because I need to ask a question I don't know the answer for. Like, how would a melody sound if I start with this note? But I kind of already have an idea, so it's not very exciting. That is strange. This is also strange. The C sharp is just pure evilness. I can't figure out if I should do it with the C sharp or the D sharp, which is just crazy. And this is like, so we are playing the major on top of the minor. Let's start with the C sharp. So now I take it to the extremes, which is like a fun exercise, but. Uh, the best exercises are also the best way to make music because music is just one big exercise where you're exploring and trying out new things. And if you're not doing that, then start doing that. Another way that you can do something new is to like uh, do the opposite of what you did in the previous melody. So in the previous melody I started here, so let's do something else. I don't know what the opposite would be in this case, but uh, let's start somewhere new. Uh, <laughs> sounds so bad. <laughs> um, but uh, I will make it work. Okay. <laughs> I think I made it work. I don't see your face now. Okay. <laughs> I think I succeeded. I don't want your patience no more. You can see. It requires you to be brave and stupid, but I think you can succeed with everything. I don't want your patience. All I want 
is your love right now. Start with a note that feels a bit uh, uncomfortable, strange, and then try to do something opposite, like. If uh, I try, for example, here in the next melody I made, then I start with like a chromatic, then I will try to like, maybe I could do the opposite and go down instead of go up. Da, da, ba, ba. So I could like, ba, 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 da, ba. could my starting melody be in the next uh, melody? And I could also have bigger jumps and I could also make a faster melody or a even slower melody. And it's like, try to find as many different ways you can find opposites, like, yeah, ways of doing it different from the previous melody, because then you will expose yourself for all of these melodies, ideas that you would never hear in your mind, feel, or whatever we call it. Imagine, because our imagination is not that good. So if we can like expose ourselves for these new ways of doing things, then we'll much easier get to like amaze ourselves, do the unimaginable, get truly excited. So try to always do something new by choosing notes that feels a bit strange. And then by always trying to do something new, something opposite of what you did previously. And uh, that can be explore new intervals, new rhythmic ideas and tempo and yeah, everything that you can come up with. The third concept, finish what you do. The first rule is that you can't go back and change a note that you already made. Like, if I figured out that I want to change this note to this, I can't do it because the rest of these notes are built upon that I choose this note. And the only reason why I would like to change this note is because I start to doubt myself. But doubting yourself will never get you anywhere. So if you are unhappy with what you did, then uh, always finish it. Like if I only got to this point, then just like force yourself to work slow and thorough and finish it and then start writing a new melody. And then the other thing is that you should always finish what you do because sometimes we feel this uncertainty and we're like, oh, this is bad, oh, fuck it, I don't wanna finish this anyway because it doesn't matter. But when we are trying to do something new, something we haven't done before, it just doesn't feel very comfortable. It feels unsecure and like, ah, I want to do something else. And I think often that feels like this is a bad idea, but just the opposite. It's a sign that you're doing something that could end up being like, something that amazes you because I think the biggest finding is, is when we are trying to do something new or when a mistake happens and we listen to it and we're like whoa I would never have thought of that and when we are doing these things then it's like our body wants us to like return to home return to safety so it's like trying to like no just do like you usually do return to your habits but it's so important that you finish your melodies, you finish everything you do, no matter if it feels bad or what, whatever it is, because when you do it slowly and thoroughly and simply follow these concepts, then it will never, <laughs> yeah, actually, it will never turn bad. Maybe it's not what you were looking for, but it won't get like this bad, so bad that you don't need to like finish it. So like start to trust and when you do your best, it will return to be something that is exciting in some way. And then just remember that, hey, you're writing at least three melodies. So if this is like not working, then it's okay. And in general, wait, judging what you do. Just like try to be thorough and always try to do something new. And if you do this, then it really does matter if you think it's good or bad in the moment, because in the moment you don't know anything. 
It's like some time ago, I wrote three songs. I wrote a song a day, and the first day I wrote a song, it was like, whoa, this is my favorite song. It's so good. And the next day I wrote a song, I was like, oh, this song is also okay. It's not as good as the first song. And then the third day I wrote a song, it was like, okay, kill me. I just want to finish this song because it's so bad. But it's okay because I wrote a song and I don't want to judge it. And like, oh, fuck me. I hate myself. Um, the song I wrote on the first day is crap. The song I wrote on the second day is also crap. The song I wrote on the third day is maybe one of my favorite songs I've ever written. And that just tells a lot about how we judge and how it really doesn't matter what we feel at the moment, unless it's about excitement. But judging if what we do is good or bad is like yeah, we can't use it for anything besides demotivating ourselves. When you do this, be thorough, listen to as many different notes every time you make a decision, listen to as many different timing, rhythms, like try to do it a bit before and a bit later, always sing along, and then when you need one melody, try to write three or even ten. If you start to like do it, then I will promise you it just gets to like this point where it's like, oh, writing melody is fun. Because when you write 10, then it doesn't matter if nine of them is bad, because it's just this feeling of composing, which is really, really amazing. Especially when you combine it with trying out new things. Because when we are doing a lot and exploring new ideas and ways of making melodies, it just becomes this like, yeah, music is a magic feeling. So try to do something new by always doing the opposite of what you did previously. And then by choosing some strange notes, especially for the first note of the melody. And then finish what you do. So when you start writing a melody, finish it no matter what. Maybe what you are doing feels uncomfortable and really wrong, but maybe that's the best sign that you're actually doing something that is going to be the best thing you have ever done. I hope this will make it easier for you to make some really amazing melodies. And if you like my approach for making music, then I think you should go and check out my online music school, ransby.biz. If you like this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and consider to subscribe to my channel. It would truly make me happy. Enjoy.